Alrighty, so today's the day. We're gonna go ahead and put together the DroneWorks PC. Now I've pieced together all these parts specifically for one task in mind, 8K video editing. Let's get started. What's good guys, welcome back, Ken here. And in today's video, we're building a absolute beast of a PC. Now this PC is going to total out at right at about $3,500. I'll be sure to have a link in the description below for the exact parts that I used, but I will also include alternative parts that will get you very, very close to the same performance for way less. We just went absolutely crazy on this build for this computer, but you don't have to go this crazy, so I, I want you to keep that in mind if you're going to build something for yourself like this. There will be a link for alternative parts, sub, $1,500 and then I'll try to do like a thousand dollar build as well. But anything under a thousand, you're gonna really get some pretty crappy performance, I think, when it comes to the terms of the GPU. All right, so with that being said, I'm not gonna do a full detailed guide of how I built this because unless if you're using the same exact components, the build guides are always, always different. And there's a lot of computer guides on how to put a computer together. And if you just have some basic common sense, it's really not that hard to do. But what we will be doing is doing benchmark comparisons to my rig that I have behind me to this new rig now to see what gains we got. So we're using the Ryzen 9 3900X as the base CPU. My rig that I have right now is the 3700X. So it goes from an eight core processor and this CPU that we're putting in is a 12 core processor. So it should be an absolute beast. We're also going to put in the GeForce 2070 RTX Super, which is a great GPU. I've been using it for a while without incident. Putting that on the X570 motherboard with Wi-Fi. This is the MPG version. I'm a big fan of MSI, if you can't tell. A two terabyte Evo Plus NVMe SSD. And then of course, we have some minor components over here that are going to be helpful to the studio. 64 gigs of RAM, this is 3200 RAM. Um, from HyperX, I'm going to overclock that to th about 3,600. I'll get it as close as I can, as stable as I can, of course. And then we also have an Elgato 4K Stream Deck. It's not a Stream Deck, it's a, a 4K60 Pro. It's an encoding card, which will allow us to do our live streams from the studio now versus here, and we'll be able to stream in 4K, which is pretty cool. We also got a liquid cooling system from Castle. This is a Castle 240X. It's actually made by Deep Cool. I love this cooler. It looks incredible. I have it on my machine and it works really well. And it also keeps the temps really, really low. We have a 650 watt power supply from Thermaltake. It also has RGB. Got some additional RGBs. And then just to sort of clean up the build, I've got some uh, wire sleeves that we're going to use just sort of make everything look really pretty. And then, we're gonna pair that all in the uh, H510i case from NZXT. Damn, that was a mouthful. So we're gonna put everything in this case here, um, and that case should be really, really minimalistic, and it should just be a nice, tight, really well-functioning build. So I'm gonna time-lapse this whole build, and then we'll talk about some benchmarks and performance and what you can expect out of similar components. Let's get started.
there's no need to panic. The best part of waking up is a drone valley cup. Links in the description below. Not an actual affiliate. Alrighty, so here it is. This is the DroneWorks PC build. I'm calling this build code red. I think it came out absolutely excellent. Now, the time lapse I had to sort of cut a little bit short because I was having some issues and I didn't realize, yeah, all the lighting in the office is super cinematic, but it really makes building a PC incredibly challenging. I think the next time I do a PC build, I'm going to have much more light in, in the office. I'm not going to try to make it super cinematic. Actually, the next time I do a PC build will be in the new studio, but um, definitely a little bit challenging. Had some issues with getting it to boot up, like when I powered it on initially, all the lights came on, um, but no CPU was powered. So I had to go back, look at the connectors on the motherboard. I found that there was a connector that wasn't in all the way, plug the connector in all the way and we got it to boot up. So if you're watching this video right now, this video was edited with this build and um, running some initial benchmarks on this computer. Geekbench was putting out a really low score actually, which I found to be a little strange, but then I ran CPU bench and saw that this was running in the 54th percentile. It was a little bit lower than some of the other computers, but it was running at a UFO speed according to their, you know, characteristics of the bench. Anyways, what I did find was that I did not have XMP enabled in the BIOS to allow the RAM to hit its peak clock speed. I also overclocked the RAM, so I got it at like 3300 stable. I was having some stability issues, and I did not overclock this computer, but I did install Ryzen Master, which allowed me to hit a peak clock speed of 3.85 stably and it's more than enough. It does have a peak clock speed, but this computer isn't something that you would use for gaming, let's say. It's a great PC CPU, but I wouldn't use this for gaming. It is really more designed for creator and productivity workflow. So what I did was I imported a 6K clip into Premiere Pro and I proceeded to color grade that clip in Premiere Pro. Now that was 6K and I know I said I made this computer for 8K editing, but I wanted to see what it could actually do with a really heavy HEVC codec, and it did great. Adding multiple layers didn't really slow this down at all. With my 3700X, if I added more than four layers of color correction, I wouldn't be able to play back through my timeline. Now, with being able to export this out through Media Encoder, it was like less than 30 seconds. The whole clip was able to be edited out and uh, playback was beautiful. As far as thermals go, this PC doesn't run much hotter than 35, 37 degrees Celsius at idle. Under peak load, I was seeing temperatures of 52 degrees Celsius, and I have to give big thanks to that Castle 240EX because it does a phenomenal job of maintaining stellar temps. The thermals on this computer are just phenomenal. I used the stock thermal paste that came off of the cooler. I didn't change it. A lot of people have different, you know, different things as far as they like to do. They like to use their own maybe cryo knot or uh, the Arctic MX4. I use the stock on both this build and my my personal rig behind or I should say in front of me. Um, and my temperatures are somewhat similar. But overall, the 3900X, as far as a creative productivity standpoint, I think it definitely does better. I noticed less of a bog on Premiere Pro than I did on my rig. Now, with that being said, Premiere Pro is not incredibly optimized. It's, it's a pretty taxing environment to edit in. So if you're using something like DaVinci Resolve, you may see faster results than what I'm seeing here this with this processor is is phenomenal. Now you do need an X570 board to be able to use the 3900X, although I have seen people use like the B450s and the, the 470 boards, but you will need to use a BIOS flash 
This is an X570 board. It's designed for this chip set itself. And I think it worked great. I didn't have any, you know, any problems with it whatsoever as far as uh, the boot up process or being able to navigate the BIOS. MSI BIOSes are really, really super simple. And if I shut up here for a moment, it's a pretty quiet build. I did tune the fans just a little bit and it's pretty quiet. Now, the only thing I don't like about this whole case is that the top portion here uses a, um, there's a USB-C port up at the top and there's also a standard USB port 3.0 as well. Unfortunately, the USB-C will not work unless if you buy an adapter. I had to buy an adapter for the one I have on my rig, but I've noticed sometimes it doesn't have the same transfer rates as if I was using the back USB-C port, but that's just a small gripe. I'll probably never use it at all, but overall, I really like it. I like the fact that I was able to match the color scheme. Red, white, and black is the colors of Droneworks, so it just sort of all tied together. But um, yeah, 650 watt power supply does seem to be enough. I'm not drawn much more than 400 watts, so I have plenty of overhead here on this build, and if I wanted to overclock this, I definitely could, although I don't see much of an advantage from a creator standpoint to overclock because I'm utilizing all 12 of those cores when we're editing and exporting video. The 2070 GPU, the Super is sort of overkill. I could have went with the 2060 and achieved similar results, but it's just nice to have things future-proof just in case if Premiere ever decides to utilize the GPU more in a future update when it comes to AMD processors. But all in all, I said this build was $3,500. I guess I should have also stipulated that that is including peripherals. Um, we did buy a um, Logitech MX Master 2S mouse for this and along with the Logitech Create keyboard. And the monitor that we're going to be using with this is a 4K Samsung 39 inch monitor, which costs stupid money. So I guess what I mean is $3,500 altogether, but roughly about $2,500 just for the PC itself. The reason why I like PCs is because they are modular. I can always upgrade and change anything I want. And if I decided to put an AMD GPU in here, I could try to install, you know, Mac OS if I wanted to. But again, I really don't see the point. I don't have a problem with Windows. I like Premiere Pro. Yes, there are some things I absolutely hate about it. And at times I, I just want to divorce Premiere. But for the most part, it's more of a, a love than hate relationship. But there you go, that's the build. I'm, I'll be sure to include links to some alternative parts that I think will give you guys similar results. But if you wanna see the full parts list, links will be down below. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Mm. Coffee just tastes better out of a Drone Valley mug. I don't know, what do you guys think? Stay original. Alexa, turn on office light.